Hello and welcome to vlog number 18. This week so far has been pretty much about one project, which is the next challenge from the Tabletop Crafters United Discord, where in March the members of the Discord group have been set the challenge of making a temple. Now I've taken advantage of this and decided to start on the temple that I was planning and have been planning for months now as a backdrop and also as a gaming piece uh, and to use with the battle company that I'm painting up. Now that means that this week has been pretty much all about that so far and so that's what you're about to see. However, I'm sure that over the weekend, it's very early on Saturday morning as I sit recording this, I'm going to get some time to do some other bits and pieces and so I'll attempt to mix it up. But we'll find out at the end of the vlog. I don't know yet either and we'll see how it goes. So I will invite you to grab yourself a cup of tea and enjoy the next half an hour, 40 minutes and see how this week has gone. Yesterday evening I had quite a successful time, very brief but successful. I managed to get a couple of colours onto the doors, so old wood and actually gunmetal grey. This evening I'm not feeling all that productive, so I'm going to pick something quite simple. I'm going to prime my Dunlendings that I have assembled. I've still got the pack here which I would like to be converting, so I'll be doing those at some point but not tonight. And I've brought through the Heroes of Dunland, so I'm probably going to look at cleaning these up and maybe even assembling them this evening, but at the very least I'll try to probably put them through the wash um, and maybe glue them together. So that's what I'm going to do this evening. I'll try to remember to come back on camera later to show you where I get to, but otherwise you'll just see the next time I sit down. I think my habit is going to be to try to get in here more often. As I said, I've really enjoyed painting more miniatures. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to crack on and see how much I can get done before I decide to get to bed. So that was a short evening, but still got stuff done. I've begun the process of gluing the uh, Heroes of Dunland together but I've only done one bit on each because I got a bit tired and my attention was wandering. So then along the back, you probably can't see just very much, but I've actually managed to get the primer on all of the warriors of Dunland that I had assembled. So that's not such a bad evening. I'm going to call it a night now and go and get an early night and rest up for the week. Uh, but yeah, at least I've got something done. Let me introduce a new project. This is thanks to Ryan from Terrain Crafters United, the Discord group, which is what also influenced me and inspired me to do the um, shed build last week. The challenge for March is to make a temple. Now, I have been planning and gathering materials and ordering supplies and gathering miniatures and, and all sorts of stuff for two or three months now with the aim of making a serpent or snake based temple for my battle company, the Karna Chameleons, <laughs> uh, because obviously from the serpent riders in the Haradrim, I've come up with the idea, and maybe it's canon, maybe it's not, I've no idea, that the Haradrim potentially worship serpents, at least partially, and so they should be some kind of a temple. And that's gonna be a background and a backdrop for a lot of the photographs of my battle company. I was not gonna start this yet, however, now I am, because I've got until March, to finish this, certainly enough to enter the challenge, and let's see whether I could do something about winning. I didn't win the, the uh, with the shed, but then I had no intention of. It was more of an inspiration and a motivation than a, an, a, than a prize winning attempt. However, I think this is gonna be pretty cool. What I'm about to do, which won't be on camera, but I'll show you the results of it when it's done, is get my pencil and my paper out and start drawing. I aim to do a six by four board, yes, a six foot by four foot board, which will have three sections, three four foot by two foot sections, which will be able to butt up together. And the first third is going to be the uh, avenue and kind of processional towards the temple. So that won't actually have any buildings on it, potentially maybe some little small ones, but, uh, but not the actual temple itself. The other two, two foot by four foot sections, so a total of four foot by four foot, is going to be the temple complex itself. And when I say complex, I mean complex. I have all sorts of ideas that are bubbling around in my head. And it's going to be playable, it's going to be multi-level, it's going to be mostly inside with rooms, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to go away and start drawing and try to come up with something interesting, but, but also 
It does suggest the serpent in its design. And when I've got something, I will show you. But for now, I'm just so excited, I wanted to record a little segment to camera and explain my plans so we can see at the end of the month how close I've got to achieving them. So I did my planning and I did a sketch and I've come up with a concept, which you can see here. The concept is, is that on this side, we have a third of the board. So that's a two foot by four foot section, which has a snaking path designed to look like a snake's body leading up. And this is a rise. So the land level uh, will, will actually rise from this end up to the edge of the board. And it snakes up towards the grand entrance of the actual temple, where it sits across these two boards. This is stylized to look like the head of a snake, as you can see, hopefully, <laughs> my terrible drawing. And it will be playable inside and multi-layer and everything like that. So there's a lot more to go on that in terms of detail. But that's the concept and that's what I was aiming for. Now there is one other concept which my friend Alchemy suggested, which is to have two snakes twining together and potentially try and do something like that. I need to draw that up and work out how well that's going to work and I'll be trying to do that today. However, what I have decided is roughly my scale my sizes and also my construction technique i'm going to make the temple separate i'm going to make it so that it is actually sits on a base itself and can be lifted off of the terrain base and etc etc for storage purposes and access and what have you uh, to do that i'm going to cut up some xps sheeting into 10 centimeter high strips because that's how high I want to have each of my floors. It's going to be quite a grand building. And I'll also be taking the texture off the sides of the uh, XPS. This is because of the pain I'm going through at the moment on the Barlands tomb build, trying to cover that up with other materials. And that's just a pain and taking ages and really annoying. So anyway, that's the concept. That's where I'm at. I'm going to get that done now on the Proxon. And I will be back on this project with another update very soon. What I'm going to do now is demonstrate the walking fingers technique that I'm using for cutting the edges or the, the um, texture off of these really long boards. So I'm going to put my mask on because this is nasty stuff. And if you watch my fingers, you'll see how I'm working. It means that I get a very steady and even cut. <laughs> This build is big. It's one of the biggest I've ever done and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. What I've decided to do to make this a little easier for myself to uh, move forwards is take a large cardboard box, which I've flattened out here, and measure out the four foot by two foot section, which is gonna be one of the boards that I'm making. And then I'll get another one of four foot by two foot. So eventually I'll have a four foot by four foot of cardboard on which I can draw out where I want the temple walls to go and where the internal walls are gonna go to give myself an idea of a layout without blowing things down and feeling too pressured. And that will then enable me also to cut out a template, which I can transfer to my wooden board, which will probably be plywood in the end, and cut that out so I can cut once there, having measured 400 times, which is the best way to be accurate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure out four by two on this board, and I'm gonna cut it out, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other board. So let's, uh, let's see how successful this can be. So it doesn't really matter too much about 100% accuracy because I am going to be actually cutting this out down smaller once I've got the shape of the actual uh, temple in. However, four foot is 48 inches. So that's four foot. Ugh. And that is a stupidly returning tape measure that returns too fast. What I'm going to do first is measure the four foot along and then trim all this off because that is going to make it easier for me to, to use. So, four foot's there. There we are. And let me go up this end and do four foot as well. So, there. You can see how well I planned this out, can't you? 
And this is why I got myself a wireless microphone. Brilliant purchase. You know what I need, I need some clippers. I'll be back. Who'd have thought that I would be without a clamp and a needle? I think the battery ran out just before the end of cutting out these last night, but I didn't worry about that because you'd seen most of it. I've measured out two sections of cardboard that are two foot by four foot. And what I've just done, not on camera because it was a little bit of a convoluted process, is mark using pencil and make notes of some lengths, some rough outline of where the exterior of this temple is going to be and looking at it is big. <laughs> Um, I may have uh, overstretched myself with this project, but we shall see. I always worry about that and then you just crack on and get what you can done. done. So what I'm going to do now is, is show you roughly what the plan is. Uh, I'm going to mark that out in the Sharpie so that we can see where the actual wall edges are. And then I'll turn the camera off again and I'm going to start to lay out a rough interior. The idea for this being that this be playable as well as obviously a huge piece to look at and use for backdrops. So yeah, I'll point the camera down a bit more so you can see the board a bit better and I'll get the Sharpie out and we'll start drawing some lines and I'll talk you through the measurements and the, the thinking really. So yeah, let's go. So the very fine lines you can see there were made with a pencil because I was making mistakes as you can see on this right hand side. I started off a few times before I came along a line that I was pleased with. So first of all, what we've got is at this point here, this is where the path for the first third of the board, which I'm not designing yet, will join in. So you can imagine that this is actually above the table a bit because the path will be rising up to it and I'm not entirely sure how high, but at least 10 centimeters if not more and then there'll be a gate so this is where you'll be able to get an entrance to the temple and that will be the only way in and out that there is now what i've got here i'm just about to draw in is the way that the walls will actually retreat back from the neck if you remember this is stylized to look like a snake so it will go back like that and let's do the other side as well for completeness sake it is basically uh, it, it repeats itself, it's, this is a mirror line. So, so like that. And then what it will do is the angle changes slightly and it return, goes up a little further at a slightly sharper angle or less sharp angle. And then it straightens out as you get to the top. So this is where, this is what the first board will roughly look like. And this is the external walls. This is not the internal line, this is the external line. What I'll be doing is when I'm happy with this cardboard, I will take these measurements that I've got, transfer them over onto my plywood, and I will then cut these shapes out of the plywood. That will then be my floor and I will probably have two shapes basically the same and they will be able to sit on top of one another 
and we'll be able to uh, be a mimicking of two stories. So that's the plan. As we go on to the third board, what you can see is that the uh, straight bit <laughs> continues for a little bit. That will make it easier for me to join up um, and make it a bit of a tidier uh, thing all around. And then it returns inwards here at a sharper angle. Now what this is going to result in is quite a lot of dead space over here, which I'm going to be considering what to do, whether it will be waterfalls or whatever, or um, uh, maybe a, a, a small snake temple on either side mirroring. I'm not sure, but we'll come to that later. That's not part of this first build. I don't need to worry about that. The first build is literally just the temple. So the temple goes to the snout, which is what that is and then it goes across the center line and is mirrored on the other side. So there we are. One idea I've had for here is that this end be the holiest of holies, being the furthest away, and also that it may be, be open and it can have teeth, stylized teeth, so that it looks like the open mouth of the snake and maybe even some kind of a, of a tongue in there, but we are starting to get really advanced then um, and maybe stretching my abilities as well, so we'll see if that happens. And potentially having a um, open shaft here and here that will be, uh, when you look down on it from the top, would look like the uh, venom pits on a venomous snake. So there we are. That is the shape and the extent of this crazy build that I'm planning. And I'm quite pleased with how it looks. I think it does have the shape of a snake if you squint and close one eye and, you know, know it's supposed to look like a snake. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Well, I'll close off this segment by just showing you the, what the walls that I've cut and I've now managed to finish trimming them all down. It took a couple of days. That is how the walls are. So that is the height of one story. So again, it's quite imposing, they're quite tall. If you put a miniature against it, it's basically three times the height of a 28 millimeter miniature. So uh, in real terms, you're looking at about six meters, which is a big building, but that's what this is. I think I'm gonna stick with that anyway. I don't think I want to have it lower. I think I like the idea of having a big spacious and quite imposing building. So there we are. What I'm now gonna do, as I say, is get my pencil out again and start sketching out an interior. And I need to decide whether I want it to be mirrored or whether I, want, whether I don't mind that so much inside. So there's a lot of thinking yet to do, but progress is being made. I've done a sketch. Let me talk you through it. This is the shape as you see here, and this obviously is slightly not the same form, it's slightly off, but it still gives the rough shape of the uh, exterior of the temple, which I've also marked in the thickness of the walls, as you can see. So the concept is, is you come in through the gate over there, come through the gate into a big square courtyard. This courtyard could potentially have a snake pit in it, which I've got on order, which should be coming in the next couple of days. And off of this, there are gonna be five doorways. These doorways lead into two um, kind of ante rooms, potentially for uh, maybe washing in or whatever, so for um, preparing yourself for ceremony, and then to a central corridor, which leads off and has a couple of other rooms off the side of it as well. Gets to a cross, uh, at least a T-junction, I'm thinking of blocking this off, but it goes to a T-junction which takes you left and right to stairs, men to the right, women to the left is the concept, this being some you know, regressive religion. Uh, and then these stairs will take you up to the next floor. This is obviously the ground floor, the initial one you enter. Each of the other doors off of the central courtyard will take you round in a loop and will take you also to the worship area, but will have cells and storerooms and what have you coming off either side of it as well. So there'll be doorways off it. At this end is the most holy place. And the concept for this little area here is potentially this is a secret viewing place, or maybe it could be the priest's preparation chamber, or even if I'm thinking this might have uh, human sacrifice, this could be where the poor victims are kept and thrown through into the most holy place. Now, 
As you get to the next floor of us, you're not laid out the actual floor diagram just yet. I will do that soon, but I have got some ideas. One of them is, is that the courtyard will be open. So it will at least be open to the, um, so that will be not there. So you'll be able to maybe have some uh, balconies and a bit of a kind of atrium coming in there when you enter. And the other thing is, is the most holy place will definitely be two stories at least. And you will only be able to get into it via this first floor or maybe even via the floor above. I'm not sure via the roof, but it needs to be quite a private way of getting into it. Uh, and that you will get into it via a stairway, which will be made to look like a snake's tongue. This is a nice idea and I like it a lot and I think it will look great. So there we are. That's a rough idea of what I've come up with while I've been kind of sketching away. My next task is going to be to cut this shape out and this shape out out of some um, plywood and I'm probably going to cut it out twice so that won't be done now because it's night time and Rose is asleep and big as this place is the sound of me cutting and sawing is still going to disturb her so I'm going to leave that for now go and do something else sleep on it again I'm dreaming about this project that's how, uh, that's how much I'm enjoying it and uh, I'll be back with my power tools and getting ready to actually do the floor plan and stick the walls on tomorrow hopefully. As part of this project, I have bought these um, moulds. They're actually for pastry, I believe, uh, and also for oven-baked clay. Now, I didn't want to use oven-baked clay. Uh, this is actually an opportunity for me to try casting powder. So basically, plaster of Paris, got a big pot here. Would you believe I'd never really used this stuff before? So it was quite a, uh, quite a thing for me to, to start this. So I've done a few, I'm not going to pretend, and this isn't my first t attempt. Um, if I pan right, you will see there is what I've currently made. However, as you have also just seen, panning right again, very gently, there we are, I have a huge, huge project to do. And so I was looking at that thinking that's going to be quite a lot, and now I think I'm just going to be making these uh, for days and days and days, because I'm going to want some on the path, I'm going to want them to decorate the walls, and yeah, I may even see if I can find some more uh, different of these uh, different um, moulds and, and order them as well. What I thought I'd do is quickly go through how I am using this casting powder. Um, it's taken a few goes, but the last time actually came out the best so far. So I think I'm slowly but surely getting the hang of it. So let's get this open. I will skip this bit because it makes a horrible noise. Just like that. So what I've got are these measuring cups, which I bought for use with the Freeform Air, which is also a video of which is in progress. <laughs> and because I've only got these very small molds, it's actually really hard because you haven't got, so it says to add a kilogram of casting powder and 750 mils of water, which would be quite easy to do. But I'm doing here about 30 mil. Okay, so it's a much smaller quantity and that makes your quantity control quite difficult. So this is how I've managed to get around that. 30 mil or so into my little mixing pot. And then I've got a small jug here, which has um, on this side 25 mil and 50 mil. And I'll put just a bit over 25 mil in. Okay, as you can see, just because it's such small quantities, it's actually quite difficult to control. And as I've said in the past in other videos, bear in mind you can add more water, you can't take it out. I'll then pour not quite all of it in, and I'm looking to get a specific consistency. It's not milky, that would be too thin, but it certainly isn't as thick as it suggests, because if you do it as thick as it suggests, if you look at this mould in particular, the uh, depth of that is quite a lot, particularly around the nose and the snout. And so to be able to get it to actually pour in there, you need it quite a nice consistency, quite a, quite a liquid consistency. There we are. So mix it well. And that's pouring around as you can see in there, it's, it's shifting around quite nicely. 
What I'll then do is I'll pour into the deep one first because the other thing you're doing is as you're doing this, as you pour it out, your plaster is actually going to get a bit thicker because obviously you're mixed, you probably haven't mixed it very well like me. And so if you've got a mold like that one, which you want it to be uh, going into the depths, you want to do it first. And then what I've been doing is giving it a gentle tap. Doesn't matter if it spills, it's only plaster. It's gonna be all um, worn, all, all, all sanded down anyway. So then I will pour into each of the other molds. Okay, leave the big one for last. Because what I'm now gonna do is tap it and push it around with my with my kit actually, dining room knife, table knife, which I use a lot. And just make sure that it has gone into all of the crevices and all the cracks. Now this is in no means gonna make something which is good enough to potentially model, uh, so uh, model to actually game with. But for what I'm doing, which is looking to do architectural elements these are going to come out absolutely fine and for my first attempt I think this is probably a good place to start where I can always you know any miscasts or whatever or slight mistakes just look like aging of the actual ca um, carving on the walls so we'll get as much of that plaster out as we can now we'll put it into the big one and as you can see I've got just about exactly the right quantity because I've done this a few times now. The first time I made way too much. The second time I made too little. Isn't that always the way? So there we are. That will now get left f overnight because it's getting late now, but possibly three or four hours. Again, I don't follow the instructions. I leave it longer than it says because the first time I did it, I broke the first one I touched because I did it and I left it for as long as the instructions said. So I leave this overnight or um, I'll probably be able to get three castings a day and that's what I'm doing at the moment. So tomorrow I will show these ones being opened on camera and we'll see whether, whether I've made a mistake or whether they've come out as well as the others. So yeah, that's using casting powder and uh, using that in some molds which are actually made, like I say, for uh, oven baked clay or for actually making uh, fancies or decorations on cakes. So um, if you're a bit unsure, yes, you can use these with casting powder. It's the next morning. So I am going to risk damaging these on camera. Fingers crossed they've come out okay. As you can see, they are hard. And these, as I say, are the ones that are bought and they're made actually for use with baking. But as you can see, they pop out very nicely out of the mold. Now, as it happens, these aren't the best ones I've done yet, but they're not so bad. I've got a little bit of a missing gap at the bottom of the tail there. Let's pop this one out. You can see just how easy it is to pop these out. It doesn't take much effort at all just to make sure you haven't got your fingers in the wrong place on the back side oh that has come out well look at that that one's one of the better ones little divot there but that's pretty good well hey that's come out very well and there we are what you can see or hopefully you could see, is just how easy it was for me to pop those out of their moulds. These are very nice moulds to use, they're not, not, not difficult at all. What I'll do is I'll zoom in so you can see the quality that has been achieved. And I'm pretty happy with that, to, to be honest, those ones have come out nicely. So that's how I'm going about doing this, this casting. I'm going to, as I said in the previous clip, have to make lots. I'm just going to be basically continually filling these casts and popping them out and filling them, popping them out maybe two or three times a day uh, for the next little while so that I've got loads and loads and loads so that I can decorate those that huge expanse of wall. So there we are, onwards. Having made the progress with the designs yesterday, I'm now in the workshop and I'm going to start cutting some wood up. So what I've got here is my uh, 
three mil probably plywood, quite thin. And I'm going to measure out four foot by four foot from this board and cut it in half. And onto that will go the layout I drew yesterday. I will eventually be looking at cutting out the odd shape to go on the second floor, but I'm going to focus on the first floor initially and see how well that goes. So it's just going to be two rectangles, each of them four foot by two foot. So I'll measure it out with my, with my nice builder square here, and then I'll get cutting it with my circular saw. I have evicted Angela from her desk in room 13 because I'm a bad person, obviously. But what we've got here is the wood. So I cut this and I've also transferred onto it the shape which you see on the cardboard above. This is going to be the ground floor. So I'm currently debating whether I'm going to cut it out whether I'm going to cut it out with a bit of lip or whether I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. And I don't need to decide that right now. Maybe tomorrow I need to make that call. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get some strips of thicker wood, so uh, square wood, which I will cut roughly to these lengths and I will put on underneath. So I'll be gluing them on underneath and that and also probably all the way along the edge and probably all the way down the center. And what that will be for is to prevent warping, so to give it a bit of structure. Uh, and this eventually will then sit on um, a uh, 3D terrain base, which will have the path coming up to it here. So that will be able to be sat into the base below and will work quite nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is take these measurements, find out how much I need to cut, go and get them cut, and then stick them on and leave it gluing up on, on here overnight so that we don't have any, uh, any warpage. As you can see, it's quite flimsy, it's quite bendy, it's only three mil ply. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I've been down and I've cut some lengths of three, or oh, three centimeter by one centimeter. So very small little bits of pine, which should give it some rigidity rigidity and I've offered that up and this is on the underneath so I've also drawn the shape on the underneath which has been a good proving that the fact that I can read my diagram which is a bit of a rat's nest of scribbles and what I've been doing I'm looking at this and I'm wondering how I was going to glue it and make it right and the more I think about this the more I think that I should just be cutting this shape out I don't want all this flat space here that will all be dealt with by the board underneath which I will get cut properly and will be absolutely square so what I'm about to do now is hope that I can do this quietly enough I'm going to go down to the workshop shut the doors and get the hobby uh, jigsaw out and cut uh, this shape out and also cut the other one out as well and then I will be able to put these strengthening pieces in and clamp them correctly with PVA glue them and clamp them correctly and leave it to dry overnight so that I've got that stable now you'll notice that I've not done one down the center there's two reasons for this one of this I'm running a little short of this three by one and the other one is I do have the snake pit coming and that could potentially sit somewhere around here so what I will be doing is is once I've got the snake pit and I've finished doing everything and I maybe have to drill a hole and cut a hole to sit it in then I'll put some more strengthening pieces across and then it will be really rigid but for now I'm just going to do this the uh, this edge just to make it a little bit easier for me to cope with the other interesting thing is is once that's cut out you'll notice that this will actually sit I don't know if you can see from there but it will sit flat between the two upright bits on this desk so it'll be nice and easy to work with so I'm going to go and do that I'm not going to bring you with me I'll show you what it looks like when it's cut and glued and clamped I have just been and cut this using my hobby uh, jigsaw which is good enough for this 
uh, and doesn't make as much noise and I didn't disturb Rosie at all, which is a big double thumbs up, frankly. So what I'm about to do, just actually just before I say that, what you can see, you can see the um, entrance, which will go here, so where the gate is. And then on this side, you can see the other one that I've cut. Now I've left the nose extending because I'm not totally sure how long I want it to be, so I didn't cut it off. But this is the shape. So when you put them together, you've got that stylized um, snake's head appearance. So what I'm about to do now, and I probably won't do it on camera because it's going to be impossible for me to do it and not get in the way of the shot, but I'll show you what it's like when it's done, is I'm going to glue these supports on the underside, so on the other side. Um, and as you can see, I have a big pile of clamps and I've got many, many more scattered around the room. So I'll be clamping each it very well in there and then um, gluing it with PVA. Uh, I'm not going to be screwing these in at this stage, I don't think. The reason for that is, is that the next step after this is to drill regular holes around the edge and I'm going to stick in glue in place some cocktail sticks which will have the spiky edges sticking up which will be a little bit dangerous for a while but that will mean that when I stick the walls on they will be pinned and those sticks those cocktail sticks will go through the base and will go into these supports so it will be pretty pretty uh, solid I think so I'm going to crack on with that now and I'll show what it looks like when when I've done um, that's going to be me for this evening I'm just going to do this one as I say I don't have enough of the three big one to get that done and I don't think I want to do it yet anyway I need to think a little more about the extent of it that set up overnight and is now nice and dry so what I'm going to do is paint some PVA over the entirety of the top and also over the sides just to seal it before I do the next steps. So I'm going to do that now. While I've been working on everything else that's been going on, I have also steadily been making progress on the Barlin's tomb. Uh, and what you can see here is something that's happened. I just noticed it today. I actually started to worry about it, checked, and it was happening. Now, if you remember, I have based this on cardboard, which I hadn't done before, and I'm not going to do again. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> it hasn't worked out how I wanted it to, and it hasn't been a very good idea. And because of all of the plaster, which I've been putting onto the base, as you can see, I've done another coat. It's still wet in places. It's actually warping a bit, it's lifting. It's not warping as such because obviously it's got its strength and its rigidity, but it's bowing like this because it's getting so wet that the actual cardboard is expanding and lifting up. What I think I'm gonna to have to do, I've put these weights in for now just to hold it down. Um, it is better than it was, but yeah, I'm probably going to look at sticking this to some plywood as well. So stick the cardboard to some plywood. So anyway, lesson learned. Progress continues on this build. Yesterday evening, with a cup of tea before I took an early night, I worked out roughly the shape that I want for the front door. And then I've transferred it roughly to this 10 by 10 or 100 mil by 100 mil sheet of the trimmed down polystyrene, one of the ones that didn't work so well because I'm gonna be cutting it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the Proxon, I'm gonna cut it out. And the concept is, is that on either side of the door, there will be two snakes, and then I'll be using this one as a lintel. So let me just get that in shot. You can see there that that has a nice shelf and that'll be a really nice lintel. So that will go above the door. And there's enough room for me to do that and also do a little bit of coving around the door, which is what I wanted to do, so that's good. The other thing I'm going to do is I've bought some more of the, um, that's actually 1.3 or 13 mil by 10 mil wood um, and now I'm going to be able to put that as bracing on the other half of the board um, and I'm also going to be able to drill and fit the um, cocktail sticks so I'll probably invite you along for that latter section just to show you how I'm going to do it but there's going to be other bits of progress going on as well as I've just been to the shops and bought myself some supplies so onwards with this project. I've trimmed this out with the Proxum. So now what I'm gonna do is cut out some card, which I'm gonna use as a bit of a lintel, like I say, or an architrave around the door. So what I'm gonna do is as simply as this, I'm going to trace the edge of the door through with my pencil, like so. Okay, there we are. Not very nicely done, but that should be enough. And then what I'll do is I'll take the, this, and that should be about half a centimetre. Yep, six mil, that's fine. 
So I'm going to put it six mil away. And then I will draw up the shape around the edge. And what that will mean is I can cut that out quite simply and stick that on. And then when it's stuck on, I'll be able to stick the other shapes on. So that won't take very long to do. It's done already. That's the shape I want it to be. There we are. So now I'll get my knife and I will cut that. So now that should stick nicely, very nicely indeed on there. So I'm gonna grab some PVA and I'm gonna glue that down. And then it's lunchtime as it happens. So that's not a bad way to leave it because that'll be ready for me to fiddle with after lunch. So the next thing to do is to mark out where I'm going to drill and put my cocktail sticks. The idea being that they will be put in vertically and then when I put my walls in, I'll, they'll be acting as pins, making it more secure. So what I'm gonna do is just mark along here roughly regularly, regularly and then a bit later on today, I will go and I've got a drill press and I will drill in a very vertical manner so that they are sitting straight up so they actually are useful and don't prevent me from putting the walls on. So that's where the gate's going to go so I'll put the holes roughly there. And what I think I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is do them about roughly every two inches or so. So we'll do one about there, and we'll do one about there, and do one about there. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all this. So I will turn the camera off now and I will invite you along again when I'm about to do the drilling. So here I am in the workshop and what I have here is my drill press with my battery powered drill. And I have set this up so that it is going to be able to um, sink down and drill in exactly the point I want it. So what I'm going to do now is just drill every single one of these holes out and um, make that and then put some uh, cocktail sticks in. So I will get that done now and we'll show you what it looks like when it is completed. All this holes have been drilled. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick in a cocktail stick to each hole. So I'll put a dollop of PVA on my plate just like that and then push it into the hole like that so I'm going to go around and do every single hole and then I'm going to leave it to dry and I'll come back to it later but you can see it's quite a quick process don't take very much time to do this so it'll just take me a couple of seconds I'll get this done now now comes the most complicated part of this build so far. As you can see, the gate is in and I'm now ready to put the rest of the balls on. I'm a little nervous how I'm gonna do this because it involves angles and lengths and measuring and cutting and I don't really wanna screw it up, but I do have a lot of foam and so we'll just see how it goes. I'm not gonna put it on camera because I'm gonna be really fettling around, but I will be back to show you how I've done it. I have some plans involving measuring and angles and drawing and stuff uh, and I'll let you know how that goes. The other thing to say, and I will just quickly zoom out, is as you can see, uh, that other section is still stood up at the back and I haven't yet done the 
space, um, so, however I have bought the material so I can. I'll probably get that done this evening. The reason I didn't do it is because I wasn't sure about this lip. Uh, I've kept this so that it's a full width of the two foot board, but I may be trimming that down. However, I've realized that I'm actually not going to be putting a wall along this bit because it will have, that will be the holy place and it's gonna be hopefully looking a little bit like a snake's open mouth from the side. So I will probably this evening as well get the 1.3 by one centimeter, get that right this time, across uh, or around all of these edges, just so that it can be a bit more secure and also then I can put the, um, I can put the cocktail sticks in and do the walls that I want to have, certainly around this edge, this edge, that edge and that edge. So it should be, should be quite good. And then I can start work on the interior, which I'm very excited about. So I'll stop talking now. I've gone on long enough in this section and I will be back later to show you how well I've done it. And maybe even if it's going well, I'll give you a little demonstration of me actually fitting some walls. Okay, so I've got to the last couple of sections of wall and I thought I'd just show you how I'm doing this because it has actually worked out okay. And yeah, it might be interesting for you to see how I've managed to achieve this. I'm uh, just shifting that back a little bit. So what I've got is I've got these squares and they allow me to ensure that the wall that I'm putting in is at 90 degrees. So if I do that, then that is gonna, they are braced between the edge of the desk and the edge of the board at 90 degrees. And so they're not gonna go anywhere. What I've then got is a section of the uh, blue foam, which I've cut to the correct length. What I'm now gonna do is put some PVA in a bead along the base. And I'm being quite generous with this. I'm not skimping because, well, I want this to stick. But it's not the only thing I'm using that's sticking. Then I'm gonna put some PVA also down the side between the two, but again, I'm not relying purely on the PVA, as you'll see shortly. So now, this is where this goes badly because the camera's rolling. Basically what you do is you push it down onto the, um, onto the stakes, onto the spikes. And the idea is, is you push it down, tie it up against one, and tie it up against the set squares, the 90 degrees, and it will then go in Nicely, nice and tight. It shouldn't be easy to do. There we are. So that's that. And then the final thing, the final thing that I'm doing is I'm getting an additional cocktail stick, which is here, and breaking it in half because I don't actually need the full length. There we are. And I'm actually pressing that in at this end. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit better. Move these. So I'm then pressing it in here to reinforce the join between those two. So just use the lid of the glue to push it in. There we are. And there we are. That, even though it's only just been put in, is now really, really solid and really strong connection between the two. So there we are, that's how I'm doing it. What I am gonna do also is come around and fill, cover with filler to get texture. So any gaps I've got aren't too bad, aren't too much of a problem, but that's worked quite well. So what I'm gonna do now is do the final one, which is over on the other side of the board, and then I'll leave it all to dry, and I'll come back to that either later tonight or tomorrow with the plaster. So I'm gonna lounge on the arm of the sofa because the shot's hard to take. But what you can see here is that I've done all of the walls and they're all setting up now with PVA. And on the floor down here, let me just reach down. Oopa! I have also done the, oh, put on the floor again. Oh, it's heavy. Well, not heavy, just awkward. I've also done the little bit of wood that goes around to brace the other section of the temple. So what I'm gonna do now is leave this overnight, leave that to dry and this to dry overnight. I will then come and fill the gaps. I probably won't do the plaster painting on until I've done all the walls. I'm gonna be doing a courtyard here, leaving a space for the snake pit and all that stuff. And I'm gonna do that in this thicker foam, but then the other walls I'm probably gonna do in just normal cardboard, thick cardboard. I'm probably not gonna try and do all foam. I'm not sure, we'll see. I make this thing up as I go along. Uh, so yeah, so that's where we're at right now. It's on target, 
still on the uh, little schedule I set myself, so I'm quite pleased with that. So I finished doing the roofs near enough on these buildings. I spray painted them and I think they're looking really, really nice. I'm particularly pleased with this one, which I did with the um, filler. And so that's probably the technique I'm going to use from now on when I'm doing thatched roofs. But this one, even though it looks a little bit scrottier, that's fine. Not all roofs are created equal and I will be flocking and what have you, I think, <clears throat> to make that better. Now, the inside of these two, this one was done with filler and is looking great. This one is done with tea leaves and is also looking great. So both those techniques are suitable, I think. The only thing that I've got to deal with right now is the fact that I had a very useful comment from someone from the video last week, from the vlog on Sunday, saying that the roofs on these, the holes on these, they're not stereotypical, they're not prototypical, uh, because it would set fire to the thatch, because if the uh, fire draws up through the hole then it's going to set fire to the thatch. So I'm going to have a think about how to solve that. I don't, I'm not really doing these as prototypical but it is an interesting challenge. Uh, so I might put a little bit of a cover over and make it look like there's um, there's not the hole but there is a vent here and a vent here which is more prototypical apparently. But I'll have a think about that and I'll show you that when it's done. But yeah they're coming on nicely. Now the next thing to do other than that little roof thing is to actually paint the walls Get the door there. I've got the this one open, so stick that one on, paint the doors, and then they're done. They've not taken very long, even though I've not been working on them very much. So they've uh, they've taken longer to complete in terms of elapsed time, but they're not taking very much effort. Pretty good stuff. I'm pretty pleased with them. I've treated the MDF here with my special MDF sealant, and now I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. So tomorrow I can put whatever colour paint I want on these walls. So that's a little bit of a step forward. And as you can see here, I've also done the archery butts because yeah, they probably need to be um, addressed as well uh, because they've been sat around for ages and not dealt with. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get them painted up and they can go on a scattered terrain at some point soon as well. So there you are, that's the vlog done and dusted. It's Saturday night and I'm gonna wrap it up there. I'm probably going to get a little bit of time tomorrow, but not very much. So I thought I'd better just finish off and get it saved and published so they can go tomorrow. It's been a good week. It's been a good last 24 hours. I've got a lot done and hopefully next week I'll get a lot done again. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please leave me a comment in the description below. Uh, I always look forward to hearing from everyone that comments and I love responding and getting into the conversations there. Um, and yeah, I have probably made a few mistakes this week, I think. So if anyone's got any suggestions of how they could have been done better, then just pop them down below. Um, I'll sign off as I always do by saying if you've not yet subscribed, please do so. It's wonderful to see you joining into this great channel. I'm enjoying making it and I'm enjoying the fact that people are enjoying watching it. And when you have subscribed, don't forget to ding the bell because if you do, then you will be told by YouTube whenever one of these videos goes live. Uh, I'll raise my glass this time. I've got a Sports Direct cup, which is also abnormally large for a cup of tea. So I'll toast you all and thank you very much for watching Beard Clipper. Ah, that's hot.